Welcome to church. We missed you guys. We're glad to see you guys back here today. My name is EJ Martone. I'm the lead pastor here at the church, and I'm so glad that you're here with us. Would you stand with me? We're going to enter into a time of worship and prayer today. Uh, but before we get into worship here, um, what I want to do, I want to read a scripture for you. This, this is in 1 Peter chapter 2, but it's believed that this is something that the early church recited often. That although Peter included this in his letter, he's, he's actually saying something that they would have all said every single week. And so I just want to read what this is about here today. 1 Peter chapter 2, starting in verse 20. But if when you do good and suffer for it, you endure, this is a gracious thing in the sight of God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you leaving you an example that you might follow in his steps. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued tr entrusting himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. What I love about what Peter says here is that it reminds me so much of the series that we're in, in the book of Ruth, about being faithful. Follow him in his steps, one step at a time. I will see an explosion of his faithfulness all in my life. It's an incredible thing. And it's something that he invites us to. So today what I want us to do is I want us to, I want you to allow any of the thoughts, any of the lies, any of the things that are, are creating division in your heart between you and the Father, anything that, that is a decay in your walk with him, in your relationship with him, I want you to allow his love and his faithfulness to push it all out, to remove it all, to get rid of it all, and to allow him to fill you to fullness today. Would you, would you allow him to take all of those things that have been harming you, all of those things that have been putting a wedge in between you and him, all those things that have been creating apathy in your walk with him, allow him to tear them out of you, allow him to heal you, and allow him to put those things in the ground where they belong. Father, we welcome you into this place today. We thank you for who you are. We thank you, Jesus, that you are the faithful one that you are the shepherd and the overseer of our souls, that you are always on the lookout. You are always mindful of what we go through. You are always aware of the threat coming our way, and yet you stand there with us by our side, strengthening us, protecting us. Oh, my Savior God.
the melody you surround me with a soul of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are breath we could ever breathe we live for you Holy, there is no 
I love that, that last few lines about how I will put my trust in you alone and I will not be shaken. Faith biblically is trust in God despite our uncertainty. especially in the face of uncertainty. That, that's what faith is, that's what trust is. And um, I felt like today, um, what God wants to do in some way, there's a lot of things I feel like God is doing, but I felt like one of the things that he wanted to do is he wanted us to move from wishing that he would do something to trusting that he will do something. To not just, oh, this would be nice if, oh, I wish God would do it, and it, it becomes this passive. with us today and if you have anything going on physical mental emotional whatever it may be if there is some sort of issue that needs healing uh, in your life then I want to trust God Today, trust him, not just wish, but trust him that he will show his faithfulness, that he'll show up and make himself known to. So if that's you, if you have something in your life that needs the healing touch of your good father, could you just, could you just gently raise your hands up and we're going to pray with you. Yeah, those who are standing nearby, anyone who...
come before you right now in Jesus' name. God, we don't wish it, we trust. Throughout this room today, God, we trust in you and we invite you here, Holy Spirit. to do a work, to make yourself known in a very real and intimate way. You're not like the other gods of the world where we have to beg you, where we have to make all sorts of crazy sacrifices to just appease you so you can maybe show kindness to us. But God, Lord, you are a good father who loves his children. And so God, Excited for it, and I get I get a sneak peek. I get all the coming attractions at home, and I can tell you it's Chef Kiss. It's awesome. It's fantastic today. Um, hey, if you're here for the first time joining us today, checking us out, I want to say welcome. Thanks for being here. Uh, you could be anywhere else. You chose to be here. We don't take that for granted. And we know that uh, it's even though you may have chosen it randomly, it's now random to God. He's got a plan and a purpose for you. And he wants to do something in your life. He wants to speak to you today. And so we are grateful. We, we want to invite you to come on out. We're going to be here at the church 10 a.m. this Saturday. Um, and it's just a couple hours commitment while we're parking cars. 
um, and when the lot fills up, it's filled up and we take off. And so um, we, it, it's, it's a really good opportunity to be able to, uh, to raise funds for the kingdom of God. And, uh, and it's also really a blessing to other people. We open up our facility for the bathrooms, um, and we get constant comments about how much people are grateful for it as well, even though we are charging a fee. So thank you, thank you, thank you, no thank you. And, um, and so it's a win-win all around, but we do need your help. And so there is a clipboard that we're gonna pass around. If you can, I know it's a holiday weekend, but if you can give a couple hours this Saturday, we would be so, so grateful because it will not happen um, if you guys can't help us out. And so we really appreciate any time that you can give this weekend. Uh, Goody Pantry, we love having our Goody Pantry. We're so excited that we get to uh, be able to be a blessing to people in our church and to people outside of the church who need food and all sorts of stuff throughout the week. And so we have a great opportunity around the holidays and especially Thanksgiving week. We have a bunch of frozen turkeys that we can't keep. We need to give them to you. They need to get out of here. So we're giving away one per family. Um, if you want that, you have to go to the Goody Pantry after this service to go get it. Um, you, all you do is you go right out here and you go left down the hallway, and then you go left again down to the youth room. There's signs labeled for Fellowship Hall. You can go down there, and that's where the Goody Pantry is. And uh, you're going to be able to get that, and plus we have other stuff in there as well. But please, today is the day you want to pick those things up. Last but not least, I want to bring up something we announced last week. Uh, we are doing a new event around Christmas this year called Wonderfest, and we're so excited about this. Wonderfest is this family fun night where we transform this entire room into uh, just a, a fun area, tables and chairs, cookies, more than you can imagine. Imagine and think of right now, hot chocolate, milk, goodness, coffee, tea, all that stuff. But it transforms this entire room into just one big Christmas-themed family game show where we're going to have tons of prizes that you can win. Everyone who plays wins something, whether it's candy or... By the end of this week, all the tickets will be gone. So you want to make sure that you guys capitalize on uh, today. We don't want you guys to miss out on it if you want to be part of it. Um, but I will say this. The one thing that we do want from you guys, even though this is a free event, we've been asking if you could sign up to bring cookies. All kinds of cookies. Whatever your great-great-grandmother's best cookie is, bring that cookie. Unless it was terrible, then don't bring that cookie. Um, don't tell great, great grandma, but, uh, but yeah, like we want that. There is a sign up board out by the welcome table that you can sign up. Many of you have signed up already. We're so. grateful. We're looking for 20 to 30 people to bake around three dozen cookies a piece. And so right now we have about 500 cookies coming. We want like a, like a thousand, two thousand cookies. We want more. So bring them. Yeah, bring them. It's going to be good. Yeah, I know that's a lot of cookies. Yeah, but we're going to do it because we're going to enjoy it here. We're going to take them home. And it's going to be a good, good, good. So
com slash give, or you can snail mail it in to P.O. Box 5695 here in Bloomington. But we love you guys. Thank you so much. I'm going to quit yapping. I'm going to... Invite Darcy. Would you help me welcome Darcy up? Hi, everybody. This is fun. <laughs> um, it's, I'm so happy to have the opportunity to. And get ready, we're going to be in Ruth chapter 1, 14 through 18. Go ahead for those who like to be prepared. But before we do that, I wanted to talk today about the meaning of Ruth's name. Um, I think names are so important. EJ and I have six kids and that process of choosing a name. Right, what God is showing us and revealing to us for this baby. And I don't think it's an accident that God has named the people in the Bible what their names are. And so Ruth's name means friend, friendship. his plans are for you. Good sermon. All right. Um, but no, we're going to tap in. So let's let's go to the text today. I want to jump right in. Ruth, Chapter 1, 14 through 18, it says, At this they wept again. Then Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye, but Ruth clung to her. Look, said Naomi, your sister-in-law is... And then this is the why you should go back. She's like that <laughs> kind of character to me. I'm like, Naomi, shh, right? So she is trying to convince these daughter-in-laws, they're not her daughters, her daughter-in-laws to like, hey, you're, you're, you don't have to do this. Don't stay with me. It's only going to be misery from here on out. Would the girls actually wait? The, the whole convincing was, would you actually wait for me to remarry and to possibly have a son again and then for you to wait to grow up to marry that boy. I mean, really, that is pretty convincing. It's kind of like, eh, yeah, no. Any 20-something-year-old girls willing to marry Grayson, the baby in the back? Like, no. It's weird. It's gross. <laughs> it's kind of yuck. <laughs> it's kind of like Old Testament logic. No. Um, and so that's what she's trying to convince. Would you agree that it's pretty convincing? Yeah, like, I, I don't think I would stick around either. And so at verse 14, let's jump. It says, at this they wept Again, and Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. Orpah makes a decision to leave. Orpah's like, yeah, you're right, Naomi. Peace out. 
But some might seem like it might be an easy, no-brainer decision. I kind of did think, like, yeah, no, no, no-brainer. I'm not sticking around. But we can believe that it was probably a little bit of a hard decision for her. But it was. This word's used often throughout the Old Testament. Actually, a lot in Deuteronomy. After they've been given the law, after they've been told what... That Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you to love the Lord your God, to walk in all of his ways, to obey his commands, to hold fast to him and to serve him with all your heart and all your soul. Joshua 23, 8. But you are to hold fast to the Lord your God as you have until Now, it's the same word used in Jeremiah 13, 11. For as the loincloth clings to the waist of a man. The Bible is a little graphic, don't you think? For as the loincloth clings to the waist of a man. So I made the whole house of Israel and the whole house of Judah cling to me. As Jovi likes to say, I'm fine. I'm fine. fine. If she gets hurt or something like wild happens, we're like, Jovi, are you okay? She goes, I'm fine. It's like, I'm fine. And that's what. What Naomi is doing, she's saying, hey, go away. I, I'm, I'm releasing you. But Ruth, she's clinging to her. So our main takeaway today, when we choose to. I'm creating a new family. We are creating a new life, a new part of the family line. That's what the words are used, why we use it at weddings. It's a declaration. I love you. I love you, EJ. I choose you. <laughs> and this is where she chooses the Hased kind of love. It's a loving commitment demonstrated not just by words but by action. She is faithfully living out the story of God, the Hased kind of love, as a Moabite, living out this kind of Israelite 
God kind of love, once again, what a vision of beauty, right? What a redemptive work of God for Ruth to be able to not just physically Say it, but with her actions, she's like, I'm going with you. So verse 16, but Ruth replied, don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. And there I will be. And I could kind of hear Ruth being like, listen, Naomi, listen up. Like, I hear you. <laughs> My ghetto's going to come out a little bit. <laughs> like, I hear you. And you did your best to convince me. But nothing, nothing is going to change my mind. I'm in control of my own decisions. And I choose you. I choose the dangerous, the unknown path of following you. She's like, Come at me, bro. <laughs> like, she is digging her heels in. She is immovable. Nothing is going to change her mind. And it was going to possibly be a dangerous path to follow Ruth because Ruth's family was guilty of breaking the Israelite law. Their sons had married foreign women. That was a big no-no. They married two Moabite women instead of Israeli women. And there could have been major consequences going back to Israel. But her verbiage implies that she understands, she comprehends that now she is counted as one of Naomi's kin. Not just by marriage, but by choice to abandon everybody she knows, her own gods, and to take up this new version of life. Basically, modern-day Ruth, right? She's recreating herself, and that's what she's saying. Like, hey, I know who I was. I know where I came from. I don't want that anymore. I choose you. I'm going with you. She was ready to walk through the dark valleys, through the good and most likely bad times. So I want to highlight the line that says, your people shall be my people and your God shall be my God. It's usually translated in our English language with an added verb. But it should read, your people, my people. Your God, my God. Not shall be. It's already is. It is already present. It's not a might happen. I might choose your people. I might choose your God. She's saying, I already... did it. Your people, my people. Your God, my God. This is the declaration of self-sacrifice. This is conversion talk, right? She's not just born a Moabite anymore. She's saying, I, I might have been born a Moabite, but spiritually, I'm an Israelite. Dying, loyalty, and affection. Not even death can make me change my mind. I choose him. And nothing is going to ever sway me. No circumstance. No lack. Oh, I have nothing. I'm poor. I'm going through the ringer. I still choose Jesus. Maybe I have abundance and I have everything I need. And I don't really need his, the dependence that I used to need. No, I still choose him. I choose him in good times, bad times, in sickness or...
different health. You guys didn't know you were coming to a wedding today, did you? <laughs> I choose you, Jesus. Nothing will deter me. Life, do your worst. I'm, I'm immovable. So when I was a kid's pastor, I was a kid's pastor for a lot of years, um, I told you I'm random. And I would sometimes like, wow. Well, Six hundred thirteen precepts. What your people can I'm not urging you anymore. It's time for a new chapter, right? The story starts with many characters. We start with six. We start with Ruth, her husband. We start with Naomi and Orpah and their husband, six people. And in these short verses, we have three women. Now it's shrunk down to two. And this is where you pause the movie. 
right, and you go get a really good snack because you know it's going to get really good real soon because the tables have turned, the scene, the setting, and the characters have been set, and we're about to see a different part of the story, right? You have any Hallmark movie watching people? Like, we have now introduced the guy in the flannel. Like, he is here. And... The story is about to change for that poor soul, New York man who's about to lose his girl. You, you have seen Hallmark movies, okay? I have, unashamedly, I, I love Hallmark movies. Um, I love them. But this is like, okay, I think about Mrs. Jones, her third grade class, when she's reading this story, and they're really getting into it, reading a chapter book, right? And they're like on the edge of their seat, and the bell rings. Now, she was kind of mean and ended in a mean place. I'm putting her on blast. She ended right where Charlotte dies in Charlotte's web, and just so, or Wilbur dies. And so that's where we're at. The scene has changed. It's shifted. And you're going to have to come back next week to really see where this story goes. But let's remember our takeaway today. That when we choose to be faithful, God's faithfulness is put on display. So it begs the question, what does this passage in Ruth, what does it mean for us today? You know, us as a people here in this day and age. And I really believe that God is desiring we kind of talked about today, it's really neat how things can be set up through worship, through what we sing, through the MC and the scriptures being read. Because God cares for you. Look at your neighbor and say, he cares for you. He cares about you. He knows you. And he wants to continue a good work in you. So God desires all of us to make that bold declaration of faith. God wants us to cling to him as the Israelites were taught to hold fast to an undying affection and loyalty. To show us, to have us show through the Hesed kind of love, our commitment demonstrated by faith. So this week in preparation, I started praying for Genesis naturally. And what, what does God want for us as a people, a body of believers who come together and call this place home? And I started to ask questions, right? That's how I respond. I started to ask questions. How can we be challenged to maybe make another bold declaration of faith to those around us? So many of us had made that declaration of faith in following Jesus. Yes, Jesus, I, I, want, I love you and thank you for forgiving me and you're my savior. And we choose that. But I believe that God wants us to grow in our faith, to grow in our challenge, to be courageous. He wants us to be bold. He's calling us to have a bold kind of faith. So have you made a bold declaration of faith since that first time that you said yes to Jesus? Have your actions, have they demonstrated God's faithfulness through your faithfulness to him? I started to think about my own life, right? Do those around me. Those who are with me in my world, if you may, do they see God's faithfulness on display? Because I have chosen faith that leads to action. If the worship team can come back up, we're going to conclude. Does my family, my kids, the people I live with,
of width, right? Like the people. that you live in close quarters with your room I am determined as my three-year-old to buckle their own seatbelt. And he gets the glory. Will you stand with me today? So some questions to ask.
ask you, are you... Daniel called upon in the light. talk about faith and not have an action part to respond, right? So, a couple things. Maybe you haven't given your heart to the Lord in the way that I've talked about, and I want to give opportunity for that. That maybe you're like, I don't actually know that same God you're talking about, but I want to. Then this is for you today.
have felt that in my life where I'm like, God, <laughs> when? How long? It's been a hot minute and I'm getting a little anxious. And God is so gentle and kind to continue to speak to you, to encourage your heart in that. <laughs> 